Um, what this dynamical system does right then you would say start with uh, some x naught right and let me um, concentrate on the interval 0 to 1 so we're going to assume that um, this function is defined on interval 0 to 1. So initially the value is, is, um, is in this interval and then if I were to graph this it's obviously a quadratic upside down and it has a peak here, right? So let's see, peak is halfway in between, so that's one half. So when you compute g at one half, you get a over a over four, right? So if I want that the new value of x to be also between zero and one, I need this a over four to be less than less than one, right? So so we're going to talk about the case when a is, of course, positive and less than four. Okay. Then a over four is less than one. So, so when I uh, when we apply g to any number here, we're going to get x one in that interval and so forth. Right. So x one is g of x naught is going to be interval zero to one. X two is going to be g of x one. Right. Now. Because g is not linear, um, what's this going to be if I were to, to write in terms of g naught? Well, it's going to be g of g of x naught, right? Okay. So it's, it's g composed with g, right? So if you know composition, it's right. The g composed with g. So sometimes you write this as g square or something, but it's not. It's not any. I mean, it's it's g composed with g itself. Okay. So then you keep going like this. So x n is going to be g of x n minus one. So it's going to be g composed with g, composed with g n times g of x naught. Okay, but you can see that it's it becoming it's actually difficult to do it by hand now because uh, you don't have it's a nonlinear, so it's not just raising something to a power, right? I mean, even computing the g composed with g, it's I don't I don't think you you would just be able to do it in your head, right? So you need to, right, if g of x is a x y minus x, what is g, g composed with g? Every time you see x, you put g of x, right? y minus a x. So it looks like it's instead of being quadratic, it's going to be fourth order, right? Polynomial, right? Okay, so we'll use this a little bit later, but that's kind of the uh, the idea. So. So again, by hand, you cannot, unless you take a number and then you punch it in a computer, it's going to be difficult to see what the this dynamical system does. Um, again, if I, if I were to do it, let's say A is uh, 2, or 2.5, let's, let's do 2.5. Okay, then I, I take um, X naught to be, or X initially to be, what do you want it to be? 0.33 or something? Or 0.1. Okay, 
And then what do, you, what do I do? I do a x equals a times x times 1 minus x. And this gives me the next, right, the new value of x. Right? I do it again. I'm going to get the x2, right? Do it again, right? So what am I going to expect to happen? Well, it's not that I expect it, but I notice that this is going to actually stabilize around uh, this value, which it's not very clear from just, I don't know, a few, um, right? Because if you display more um, decimals, then you can see how it kind of oscillates a little bit between that, right? Okay, so I told you last time that, uh, well, one, one of the previous times, I said that you can actually visualize this in much better fashion, and that is using uh, one of the, um, uh, what's called a cobweb, right? So let's see, where, where was that cobweb thing? So it was uh, in the... I think I hit it in this woo. Wasn't it a code that I gave a code? Hmm. I don't remember what was it. Was it? We saw that code of of the um, um, well. I gave you. I, I I showed you a code last time. Maybe maybe I'll find it. But um, let's see. I I made a link to an interactive job. Hmm? Yeah, I think I, I looked at that, but it wasn't there. Um, so uh, let me just show you on this, I guess. Uh, it won't, I mean, it's not something we can control much. Uh, but this is, this is the same thing. So here's, uh, here's that function, right? Here's some value of a, which I don't know, you know, that's what I'm saying. I think this is a half, right, point, point 0.5. I think that would be like point, uh, point no, what am I saying? Um, an eighth, right? That was an eighth, but this is, this is probably going to be 2.5, okay? So you see that it, whatever I start with the initial condition here, let's say initial condition is 0.1, then it just computes the new value and then the new value, right? So the heights of these points are the values of the... Um, of the of the, iter of, the iter of the of the values of x that are iterated. Now, remember why why we go this way horizontal? Well, simply, you know, if this is x naught, x one is going to be here, right? So the, now you move on this horizontal so that x one is plotted down here, and then you move up and so forth, right? And this line is just y equals x exactly, and. Uh, we saw that those values kind of oscillate around 0.6 in that particular case, and 0.6 it turns out to be exactly the steady state, right? So if you set this equal to x, you know, with that value of a, you're going to find that that, uh, that that value is a steady state. Not only is it a steady state, but it's a stable steady state. Okay. Also, zero is another steady state, but this is unstable steady state. Okay, so for the range of this of this parameter a between one and three, and two point five is in that range. Um, zero is unstable equilibrium, and that value is the stable equilibrium, right? Okay, so. Uh, 
I'm bothered that uh, that we had the code sometime. Maybe I can find it here. Let's see. Oh, here it is. Um, I'm sorry. Number six. I know, but I don't know where the code is. I think this is this must be the code. Let's see. Right, and I couldn't find it right now. So look, I think this is it. So, yeah, so this is it. Okay. So so. Um, 2.5 and k this is 1 in this in our case oh yeah and I have to plot things between 0 and 1 so I have to make a slight change here let's see zero point one, zero point two, zero point five, zero point seven. 0.2, 0.5, 0.7 I don't know okay so let's see now this should work Oh yeah. Okay, so right, so that's what I was showing on that applet for a specific value of of a is two point five. Okay. <coughs> and notice that regardless of where you start, you're gonna actually approach this equilibrium. Okay. By the way, this is not obvious why. Uh, the fact that we have a stable equilibrium here, an unstable equilibrium, doesn't really explain why every initial condition here will go to this equilibrium. Right? Remember, stability of this equilibrium means what? If you start close enough to it, you're going to stay within it. Okay? So there's there's extra arguments that one needs to make to to justify, you know, to to, to basically uh, explain what you see here. Okay? That everything, everywhere you start, no matter where you start initially, you let it run enough enough times, so you're going to go to that sta a stable equilibrium. Is that always true? You just have one stable equilibrium, or now? Say it again. Is that always true? You just have, you just have one stable equilibrium. So you... Yes, I mean in in so in one dimensions it's true. Uh, what, I mean you can you can uh, there is an argument which says if you have a stable equilibrium. And your your dynamical system is bounded, so it stays always between negative one and one. There is um, there's no other way of an initial condition to do. You know, it has to approach the stable equilibrium, right? But for continuous for, for continuous dynamical system, that's not true in two dimensions and so forth. Yeah. So you're saying that even if I, even if you were to start at zero. Oh yeah, of course. Uh, no, no, no. It's zero. Okay, except in zero. Yeah, of course. But, but zero is unstable, but it's still. Um, it's an equilibrium. You're going to go to zero. You're going to stay at zero. Stay at zero. Yep. Okay, but um, I think that the, the, this kind of dynamical system is interesting because of the uh, change in behavior with this parameter a. So, so if we increase this parameter, a, remember, I think you, even in your exam was to find the range of a's for which you have a stable equilibrium, and that was zero to three. Okay. So, the moment you increase a beyond three, or even if three, three. Well, if three is going to be, let's see what happens. It's busy, busy. Okay. So, so you see what happens? You see that it's, it's still stable, but it kind of goes very slow to this, right? Okay. And this is kind of a borderline case where I think in all the cases you're still kind of, kind of spiraling in, if you want, but at a very slow uh a slow, a slow pace com compared to the previous one. Like if I do 299, you'll see that this is actually going to go, uh, should go faster. Right? But there is no, uh, so, so you see in, in the same number of iterations, which I think in this case was 100, it actually got a lot closer to that, right? So let's just increase very, very slightly. You know, maybe 
um, 3.01. Oops. As long as a, the moment A is greater than 3, both equilibrium are unstable. Right? Now, you cannot really see this, but it turns out that um, the, you know, if we do not 100, but we do like 200 iterations, what you'll see is that you're actually never going to close in to that equilibrium because that equilibrium is, 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 is um, unstable, it's going to be repelling the things. Right? So I, I, I put 200. And you see you're still not going uh, to, towards that point, right? So it's, it's kind of hard to see here, but so let, me, let me do 3.1. Let me do it. And I'm sorry, I shouldn't have taken 200. It takes a long time. You learned something today. Um, take a look at take a look at what what happens here. Well, that that is not so clear, but this is obviously clear. In fact, you can look at the at the I put the circle so you can see where the x's are. Right? You see, it actually kind of bounces back and forth. Right? So so this is what we call uh, a cycle of of period two. Right? So so. Conceivably, there is, a, I mean, you can actually see here that there's going to be a value of x that if you start there, the next one you're going to go to another value, and the next one you're going to come back to the original value. So it's a cycle two or a period two. Okay? So you have a new kind of behavior. The, the one behavior was if you start at the equilibrium, you stay at the equilibrium, right? But if you start anywhere, uh, well, if you start at this other special point which you can actually compute then you're gonna go back and forth back and forth between two values and if you start anywhere else you're gonna actually approach that back and forth cycle two, two, two period cycle okay? so how do we so how do we see this cycle of length or period 2, what would be a cycle of length 2? Would be x n plus 2 so that this is uh, x uh, g x n plus 1 which is g composed with g at x n and you want this to be equal to x n, right? So it's basically solving a solution to this equation rather than g of x equals x, right? And remember, this was fourth order, fourth order, right? Uh, and it had an x multiplied to it, so an x and an x cancel. So zero is is a solution, right? That we knew. And then it's going to be a third order polynomial, messy, which is going to give you how many solutions? Well, one or three, right? But in that uh, in that range, I think of of a equals um, uh, well, there's going to be a range of, of, of values of a for which this is going to give uh, four solutions, well, two are going to be steady states, uh, whatever it is, right? What, what was it? Anybody remembers? 1 over 1 minus a, right? So these are going to be the steady states. The steady states are, I mean, they're not really cycles, but you can think of it as, you know, it repeats itself every other, up, every other iterations. Iteration. So, and two more. And guess what? What is the role of the other two more? Well, those will be exactly the ones that 
the back and forth one, right? So on this picture is gonna. So you can actually do it by hand, except you're gonna have to solve a cubic equation, and that you may actually run into problems. So like, how'd you get there? Was gonna be cubic. It's fourth order on the one side and the x on the other side. This was fourth order polynomial, and this was x. And the, this polynomial had x as a common factor, okay. as a factor. So you could you could cancel that and be left with a third order polynomial. Now I'm not doing it because it's actually done in this handout that I gave you. Um, so if you look in this first page sec on the on the right hand side, um, except the fact that they use R is the same thing. So so you can actually see the formulas for the um, for the uh, the two for the value of those the two, two cycles. Okay. Uh, and by the way, I should mention that these, uh, this is just like a, a few pages that I printed from, um, from, this, from this book, okay? And this book is uh, freely available to you guys, um, as you know. It's actually linked here in the syllabus. So it's chapter three actually deals with discrete time dynamical systems. I don't know if I, probably mentioned this before, but uh, now it's a good time to kind of look at this. There are, there are a few more things that we, we're going to talk about. Um, anyway, so, okay, so, so basically this is, if you, you know, work it out, uh, this is what's going to, this is what the, um, the two other solutions will look like, right? And you see that A has to be greater than three, at least three to have a real, sol those have to be real solutions, right? So A, in, in this case R, has to be greater than three, right? Before that you don't have the cycles. Okay, now you can see it in this applet because kind of the nice thing. So this shows, you see there's this moment when the second when the, when the when this uh, non non zero steady state becomes unstable and you have this cycle now of course this cycle depends on on a right so if i if i as i increase a it's going to looks like it's going to move apart right it's going to i mean those two values are going to depend on a obviously but what's more interesting is actually it's going to be there's going to be a next value. So num number three was, uh, you know, what's called a bifurcation point for this parameter, right? Something is happening as you pass that value three. But as you increase, you know, and you can see it in the picture, of course, and then you can go to the paper, paper and pencil end. Well, let's see. This still looks like a two cycle. Yeah, this one. So there is some other some the next value of a that is once that's passed um, there's a four cycle right so how do you find these values of the four cycle you take that g you know you compose it with itself four times set it equal to x and you're gonna end up with a, an, an eighth degree polynomial after you cancel the uh, Let's see, it's, it's getting a little bit hairier now. But once you cancel the x, uh, it's going to be seventh degree polynomial, which can have at most seven, uh, seven, seven solutions, seven roots, right? So, so those will be, hmm, okay. So these are the four, right? So these are going to be the four, and let's, these are going to be the fifth, so I don't know why I'm getting seven. But anyway, you get the idea, right? You don't really want to do that by hand at all. But this is this is kind of the reason why you, you see this four, the four cycle show up, right? Yeah. So, so what I understand is you could you could always say you could always come up with a fourth order even when a is down. You know, a is like less than you expect the other range. Mm -hmm. A is two point five, right? You could say what's the Sure. What, what do you get in that case then? It seems like it's still good. 
where you're going to get the two cycles. Even before the two, let's say you do movement for before you get the two cycles, right? Okay, so the, the the question is what? Right. So what happens? So 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 this is going to give you a third order polynomial, right? Yeah. Which may have how many real roots can a third order polynomial have? Three or one. Or one. Or one, right? So 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 depending on a's, and then then the value of a that for which it has three. One Right. So. So when we got to the next one, the fourth cycle is probably this, this, this is the, the reason why, even though it's a seventh degree polynomial, we're probably going to have five, five roots in that range, right? But if, okay, so it's a seventh degree polynomial, so you can have one solution to seventh degree polynomial, right? Um, because you can come up with a seventh degree polynomial again, that's earlier okay. range, right? Sure, but then you, you will have. You could you could still have one root, right? Yeah, so polynomial one root, right? Yeah. Um, can anybody have complex roots? Or yeah, but the complex roots are not, um, you know, are not solution. I mean, are not steady states or cycles or anything for this dynamical system, right? So we're only looking for the real ones. Uh, let's see, three point five. I mean, it's just kind of again, you could you could actually. Do it more systematic to figure out what what the the, the threshold. Ooh, 3.5 seems to be too big, right, for the four cycle. I don't, so I don't know what the, the the next value. The first value was easy, right? The first value was three. That was a change between stable and unstable. But now, you see here, it's, it looks like it's going to be. Um, it's already. Well, well, this looks like a two cycle. This looks like a two cycle. Yeah, so th this seems to be a, a value for which you have a two cycle. Still a two cycle. And then as you move to uh, the next one. Does this matter in your initial conditions, right? And it, it still won't matter, it will not matter on the, uh, of the initial condition. Because this is independent of that, right? It's just saying, what are the some special. Okay, so this looks like it's going to four cycle, right? So anyway, so there is actually a, a sequence of values for A for which this gets uh, more and more complicated. And you will say, well, maybe we should just you know, keep increasing this. And from 4, we're going to see 8, then 16, then and so forth, right? So we're going to see a power of 2 cycle, right? But actually what happens is past yet another value, which is something of 3.8 something, things get, uh, I think this is the, I don't know, there's going to be a value here. So if you kind of put it at right at 4, so A is just 4, right? Then, um, and you look at the initial condition here, you're going to see actually things um, there's going to be no more, um, you know. Th there's basically going to be cycles of any of any order. Depending, you could you could find initial conditions for which you can create cycles of any size. Okay, and that's actually the signature of. Well, that's one of the kind of manifestation of this chaotic behavior, is that you can have cycles of any size, right? Again, depending on initial condition. Remember before, when you, when you had like a four cycle, right? It didn't matter what you had for the initial condition. Everything was doing the same thing, right? Right. Even if you had like a, I don't know, two to the twenty cycle, right? Everything is kind of behaving the same, meaning that it's it's in it's it's not um, sensitive to the initial condition, right? The the long time behavior. Or the behavior of the system, whereas you see past past a certain value, you're going to start well still, right? So this still means that you have some. Um, let's see this one still, right? So it has to be kind of uh, 
it's, it's probably hard to see that in in fact you see um, that that these initial conditions give you different behaviors but but they do so and we'll talk a little bit more about this um, about how does how is this sensitive to an initial condition right in what sense is this sensitive to initial condition but you can see you can see this behavior emerge even in this very simple simple um, simple system um, any questions on this it's too bad you cannot pick the values but again you can do this on, on MATLAB it's just not so interactive I guess okay so um, the code that I posted which is called period doubling um, it's just another way of, of seeing this kind of behavior. So let me run this. Um, and it might take a while. Let's see how long it takes. So what, we're doing, what I'm doing here is actually I'm plotting um, for a bunch of values of A between 2.5 and 4. Right, those are the kind of the interesting ones. I'm plotting only kind of the limiting behavior. So you will see in a second. So notice that I'm doing, I'm picking a value for A, then I'm picking a random initial condition. I'm doing a hundred iterations, but I'm not plotting them. And it's only after the hundred the iteration. I'm still doing the same iteration, but but then I'm starting to plot them. So. Um, and that's all it is. Now, the reason it takes long is because I'm picking a very small uh, increment for A, right? So between 2.5 and 4, I'm plotting lots of points here. So this is the A axis. Yep. All right, so... So this is the A. I should have labeled this A to be A. Uh, then what? Then what's what's on the vertical axis? X. Just X, right? And remember, these are the X. These are the computed values of X past the first hundred. Why am not? Why, why are why are we not plotting the first hundred? They're going to be actually just kind of noise in this picture, right? So. This picture just represents, for instance, think about between A between 2.5 and 3. This picture just shows the corresponding steady state, right, which is 1 over 1 minus A. So if you, I mean, think about it's just 1 over 1 minus A. 1 minus 1 over, 1 minus 1 over A. Okay? Now, it's plotting lots of points. For each A, it's plotting uh, from 100 to 200. So it's, it, it plots the 100 points, but they, you see only one. Why do you see only one? Because they're all there. They're all very close to it, right? So you don't see, you don't see any distinction. If you were starting with, a, with if you were to plot the first 100 points, you would see lots of, well, not lots, but some, right? Because remember, the initial condition was picked to be random. Okay, so that's what happens here. Now, what happens past 3, between 3 and 3.4, you, again, it would be, a ch you know, uh, one in a million chances that you start with a, with a random point that's exactly an unstable steady state. If that were to happen, you would actually see one point, right? Which would, by the way, would, would actually be just extending this this curve, right? But 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 that's that hasn't happened in this run, and it probably won't happen ever. That you just picked a random point, and then after 100 iterations, you see the kind of the only thing that you see is basically back and forth. All right. Then between 3.4 and whatever. All right. By the way, this this point, this this thresholds are not number you can write down, you know, with radicals and stuff, right? So these are, these are uh, uh, you know, values that um, I think can be computed, but, but they're not, um, you know, in principle can be computed. Anyhow, so you see the four cycle showing up? 
and then the eighth, and then very soon it's kind of becomes impossible to see. Um, right? I believe these are still this is still a region of, a, of valleys of A for which you see some. Um, Some, some cycles, right? But certainly past, you know, 3.8, I believe it's a number. It's actually written here, so. 3.82828, okay? Did the, uh, for the second and fourth cycles, when those lines diverge, that's indicating the, the two, two or four different steady states that exist. They're not steady states. But it was, I thought you said that the first line was a steady state. Yeah, this is a steady state, right. This is a two cycle. Two cycle, okay. Then this is a four cycle. Now there might be a two cycle here, but unstable. So that's why you don't pick that, you don't see that. It has to be a, like a, again, one million, million chances you, you just like here. You, this, this is still going to be an, un, uh, an equilibrium, right? The function one, or the 1 minus 1 over a is going to be an equilibrium, but it's going to be unstable. So unless you start right on that value, which on the computer you never do. Okay? So, yeah, so, so 3.82 is somewhere here, right? Somewhere. Then past that, there's cycles of any size. Okay? And so this is the kind of the picture that everybody uh, puts up for chaotic behavior. So, so what's going on there? There's a big white space there. Every, I get that question every time, um, and I still haven't. Is that supposed to be there? Is that yeah. Is that something about behavior or something about? No, no. It's no. I mean, there's nothing kind of subtle about this code. It's just yeah. plotting massive amount of points. So it looks like there's only one point. Um, well, so so this is actually you can see it in the in the here in the you see there's kind of a range it's kind of quiet down in the region here you see so so there are some values of a even that high in the range that you still get a what is this one two three cycle actually that's a good that's this looks like it's a three cycle, right? Because it has one valley here, one valley here, and one valley here. Okay. And if you um, so, in fact, that's that's so 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 on that plot, there's right there's very few points. There's just three points, right, for that value of a. Yeah, because you see, an initial condition is kind of going towards that. So. So and 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 then there's like there's a, maybe there's a value for a for which not a three cycle but a five cycle right. So the point is that if you have in the same system of a two cycle any power of two cycle and then something that's not a power of two like a three cycle, then there is a result that says that you can you can make any any number any cycle. So. Um, so it's it's already in the chaotic regime. Okay. It's above that, right? See, it's it's kind of pretty. I mean, again, it's it's hard to. Well, you can you can you can experiment on your own with uh, with this code, right? Three point nine. Let's see. This may be. Okay. So there's there's some kind of theory that one has to. Yeah. This is. Anyway, I'm, I'm not in that range, basically. Um, now, um, so, so this uh, second page of this handout just basically talks about the value when A is 4. And it actually shows you how explicitly you can write down the, the iteration. So you can write down the iteration. Yeah, so 3.83 was... You see, for some initial condition, is like this, but others. So, so it looks like that. That applet may not actually be very correct, because, right? So, but this is this is just a, I mean, pure, I mean, computation. 
Um, okay, so when a equals four, you can actually, you know, if you try really hard, you can actually write down explicitly what x sub n is in terms of sine squared and something like this. And then, then this kind of uh, um, This this uh, this computation uh, shows kind of why why this behavior why is this um, why is that a equals four is actually in the chaotic regime so so what what does it mean to have um, cycles of any size right what does it mean to that the behavior is sensitive to the initial condition I mean for that value of the parameter. Okay. But you can certainly see it in these pictures, right? All right, now um, let me come back to. Uh, I'm going to come back to this. Any questions about this? I don't know if you've seen it before or. Um, if you haven't seen it before, probably you'll remember it from now on. But I want to go to um, the whale problem, for instance. So I think it's so. Let's kind of run this. Uh, and this code again just. Remember from from last time that it had a role basically in approximating the solution of the continuous dynamical system using Euler's method, the simplest of all, um, using a certain time step, right? And I think. We were using a time step of one year here, and the time span was 200 years, maybe. Yeah. So, okay. And we actually did this kind of exercise for uh, the other, for the RLC circuit. Just change this age, but not change it into making it smaller, but changing it into make, making it bigger. Okay. Now, notice what you know. The iteration is very simple. Like, of course, it's a, it's a two component. So it's two component, two component vector. So right. So it's not a single equation. It's a, it's a pair of equations. But notice the role of h, which is just the time step, right? Think about it. You know, as I'm increasing h, it almost looks like that a, right? From the logistic map. I mean, it's not exactly logistic map, but it's not far far from that either, right? Because you know, of course, it has this x here. So if you, I don't know. I mean, this is not a, this is not an exercise of tweaking this to look like a logistic map, but just to um, to indicate that if h is going to be to be increased, you're going to expect things to occur that are not in the continuous system, like. Well, let's change h to, I don't know now the exact values, but let's just try this. Okay, so 2 is still kind of a, it's an okay value, so okay meaning what? The behavior still looks like it's doing what the continuous system is doing, right? With a lot fewer, I mean, because h is now bigger, you do only 100 iterations, right? Uh, so maybe I should increase it to five. I don't know. Let's do it slowly. Three. Okay. Well, still, still, still pretty, pretty good. I mean, nothing, nothing is, is is insensitive to this, right? Still good. Although obviously not. You know, these things are not going to be all the same. But I think five is going to be the one that is going to look different. No. Okay, let me do 10. Okay, well, let's see, it's kind of hard to see. 
Um, wow, this is resilient here. Um, 20. Well, I think it's gonna, we're going to run into... Okay, well, you should kind of... Well, you should at least see some slight variation here in, in these things. But let me, let me just get the numbers. 24. That was close. Now, making 24... Yeah, and then uh, you kind of start seeing a, you know kind of a zigzag thing, and this is not um, you know not something that will stabilize actually. Uh, and you can see this if we increase t. Let's do not t to two hundred, but let's do t equals a uh, thousand just to see more points. Okay, so. All right, so I was wrong. It does stabilize, but after a while, right? So let's see, what's the value that will stop stabilizing? So 27, okay, so 27. All right. It would have taken us 27 runs if I were going one by one. Um, right, so now you see clearly this period doubling, okay? And look, I think this is hard to explain. I mean, this would be kind of hard to explain or, or just impossible to explain for this dynamical system, okay? Uh, certainly, certainly it would be unexpected, right? Well, I mean, that just seems like you just have a big time step in your quiver. Yeah. There's no physical thing behind it. No, no, no. So it's not, right, so it's not actually, oh, okay, so this is not actually trying to go to towards the, the continuous time dynamical systems. In fact, it's, it's, it's trying to go get away from it, right? So it's trying to say the following. It's saying that if you have a, if you have a, a process, like, I mean, a dynamical system in the real world, right? And if you are kind of, uh, experiments or observations happen at the wrong time scale that you may actually uh, miss kind of important features in that system, right? Or you may see something distorted. So you may see something that's not uh, real. And 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 this is this is kind of what what this is saying. It says that um, if I don't pick the you know, in this case, it would be 27 years, but you know, uh, you can think about it at 27 minutes or something, right? Um, that if you only kind of try to model this, the d dynamical system at this at this different time scale than than you know at a large enough time scale, because that's you know feasible or reasonable to do, then you actually will see different 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 behaviors. Um, and I think if you go to 37, whoops, then you will see a, basically nothing. Okay. Again, to me, that's yeah. I mean, obviously, you see no nothing coherent. So, so that's kind of the, the point of this exercise. Is, is this is to, is to see that again if you try to model something um, by say sampling data at two cores of a uh, of, of a of a the time the time is two cores right then what you what you do you run into the risk of not seeing the Behavior of the system that's or describing the, the modeling the behavior of the system in between accurately. Now, um, you're right. This is not very. Um, I mean, this is not physical in, in the sense that um, in this kind of problems you don't you know you don't go. By increasing the, the the time step, right? You, you 
your goal is to actually decrease the time step to approximate a continuous system. But um, this is where the surprise came basically when chaotic behavior was discovered also on, on, in continuous dynamical systems. So this this is by by I mean this is by all means if you think about it as a continuous time dynamical system this is not chaotic right it's just very deterministic um, well not only deterministic but um, the solutions are you know insensitive to initial conditions so you can you can work with um, you can you can change a little bit initial condition and you will see a similar behavior right. Whereas, uh, and I'm just going to flush this here. Where's this command line? And continuous time dynamical systems such as um, okay, I don't want P plane. I'll, I want OD solve. Okay. Which is as as small as three dimensional, so I mean three components, x, y, and z. Okay, it's called Lorentz system, and you can see that it's nonlinear. So you can see it's nonlinear because the right hand side has x times z, x times y, right? So it has those competition types terms, right? Maybe predator prey type types terms. Uh, the rest are linear, by the way. Okay, but it takes three equations. You cannot do it in two equations in in two, in, 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 a, in, a, in a two dimensions. So in three in three equations with just <coughs> very specific with some specific uh, parameters, which again we'll talk about this in a, in a, in a while. Um, if you just <coughs> run this. And you plot them versus time. That that's what you see. Each component looks kind of weird. <coughs> so so in what sense is this chaotic? Well, <coughs> you have to go back and and, uh, and remember what was chaotic about the logistic map. Yes, you had cycles of any order, but that's that's hard here because, you know, in continuous time dynamical systems we don't talk about cycles as much. I mean, just periodic solutions. Um, but the more important thing was that sensitivity to initial condition. So, in other words, if I change the initial conditions by just a bit, the dynamics changes drastically, right? So, so. Again, it will be difficult to see because we'd have to save this somehow. Uh, I mean, we can save this picture, no problem, but not just the picture. You want to basically compare the two, right? And you want to just slightly change the initial condition there, and you should see how, diff how, how they differ, right? So everybody has a good memory, a visual memory. Take a snapshot. Okay, good. And now we're going to change this by a little bit. 9.9 .9. well again it's impossible to compare right but the point of this comparison is that you can make that as close to 10 as possible and this will still look very different from that when it's 10 okay now uh, the better way to to see this is to do a 3d plot X versus Y versus Z. Again, when you do this, <clears throat> it's like a P plane, right? You see only the trace of the trajectory. You don't. I mean, you don't. You just see the trajectory. You don't see the time uh, evolution of that. So, but anyway, so this is kind of. I think I can rotate this. Can we rotate this? Yeah. Well, okay. So I'm sorry. This this doesn't let you. 
Um, okay, but <clears throat> right. So you start. This is the initial condition, and then it kind of goes in this wild pattern, right? Which is um, it's called a strange attractor because it, it, it doesn't matter. Well, it, it will matter if you start really far away. Uh, with initial condition, then it's it's going to look different. But if you start with um, with with initial conditions in a certain region, which is close to this attractor, then things are going to look like this attractor. Okay. So why is then sensitive? Like if I put ten here and I do the same thing, it's going to look exactly the same. So. Why don't we say that it's not sensitive? Why do we say that it is sensitive? It's still computing. You see, the, 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 the trace, I mean, the, the, the trajectory looks, I mean, on ink, looks the same, right? The, independent of the initial condition. But what, what is different is actually the, in time, if you, are, if you are to compare, you know, for each time, the two solutions, they're not going to get stay close to each other. In fact, there's going to be times when they're close to each other, and there's times when they're on diff different lobes, right? Okay. So that, in that sense, it's sensitive to initial condition. That's the meaning of of this. And again, this is a continuous time dynamical system which um, was discovered right by Lawrence, um, and it is just a very simple to write down. Okay, so you can write this down. I mean, you can uh, imagine a type of even population dynamics, I guess, where that kind of interaction exists between three species, right? Uh, this model was actually a toy model for uh, weather, right, for weather prediction. So X was the temperature, Y was pressure, and Z was maybe humidity or something. Okay. Perfect example if you look out the window. They closed the school district 20, right? This morning. Uh, well, anyway, but but you you can just so this this was kind of a, a first instance where a simple three component system, ordinary differential equations, uh, assist ordinary differential system, temperature, pressure, and let's say humidity. Um, exhibits this kind of behavior, right? Behavior that is very sensitive to initial conditions. So it it's, makes it hard to predict, right? Um, unless you know exactly your initial condition. And in weather models, you, you never know initial conditions, right? Uh, correctly. I mean, precisely. Okay. Um, Let's see, do I want to... Any questions on those things? I think some of the homework... I'm going actually uh, all the way to the next homework assignment, so so that's maybe a good thing. You can just do both and be done with it, but um, yes? So, release... I'm going to try to form, right? Oh. Release a small change of initial conditions is going to alter it by a lot. Mm -hmm. That makes it chaotic. But the question is, how much does it need to be altered before it's considered chaotic? Like, what is the... Uh, yeah. I mean, because I could alter uh, some dynamical system, some initial condition, and it'll change how steps are going to be, but maybe not as much to make it, quote, chaotic. So what is the defining uh, attribute that makes these systems, quote, chaotic? Yeah, well, okay, so the precise definition of a chaotic system involves... For continuous. Yeah, so it involves things that we, we haven't talked about, like Lyapunov exponents, I mean, uh, things that are... Uh, so you can actually label a system as being chaotic. Now, heuristically, just talking about this, uh, yes, you can have a very nicely behaved system that if you change initial condition by 
one percent is going to cause the um, you know the um, whatever you observe to change by a large percentage, right? So that so that sensitivity number that we talked about it can be large, so right without the system being chaotic. Okay, so I think the best way to think about it is is uh, is to remember that if you lower, in those systems, if you lower from a 1% to like half a percent, then typically that lowers the sensitivity, right? So that ratio is relatively constant. Whereas in chaotic systems, you can have a very, very small change. And still the, the change in the observable is not, is not de diminished. So it's not, so, so that, you know, there's no number that you can assign to it to say a number is 500. The sensitivity is 500. Wow, that's huge, right? But there's no number that you can actually assign to it. It's just, no matter how small you make the change, whatever you observe still is, has a large, you know, large deviation. So, this question here to see, and I think I caught you say this, um, a two-dimensional not yeah. Because that would be nice to visualize. And why is that? Is that a simple answer? Yeah, well. Because I could, you know, make a two dimensional. <laughs> There's no simple answer. Uh, yeah, in two dimensions, if for, for autonomous systems, so this, this is autonomous, right? But it's three dimensions. So in two dimensions, when you have a phase plane, <coughs> uh, that's why you know I, I said I started with p plane, but then I, I I moved to it from it. If if you have a two-dimensional right, and you just plot these things, um, the the types of behaviors that happen in two dimensions are very limited. There are steady states. I'm talking long-term behaviors. There are steady states. So, so if you, if you start at a point, you stay in a point. Then there are there are um, stable equilibrium, right? Where you actually, this is a bad example. This looks like a, some sort of uh, octopus here, no, I mean, um, sepia, right? Um, so let me pick a different one. Well, anyway, so, um, so for instance, for Van der Poel, you have steady state, you have stable or unstable st equilibrium, then you have these limit cycles, right? The point is that you, the point is that you are bound by these features of a dynamical system. So, for instance, this particular dynamic system has these features: it has one unstable equilibrium, and then it has a limiting cycle, which is stable. So, anything else does one of these two things. Well, it actually does one thing. It always goes towards a limited cycle. So in that sense, it doesn't matter where you start, it's the same limiting behavior, right? So it's insensitive to initial conditions. The, the other way, then it's go to infinity. No, no. So, okay. So, question is, if it shoots uh, the other way, well, maybe there's another cycle outside that things go to, but we just didn't don't see it, right? Because we don't plot it. And if it just goes to infinity, I mean, that's just I don't know. That's that's a behavior. It goes to infinity. Yeah. But you just said that a, a two, di two, two dimensional system uh, is insensitive to initial The limiting behavior of a two dimensional system the continues. Behavior. But in a three-dimensional system, it is sensitive to condition, condition. So if you, if you in in that sense, I mean, yeah. So if you can demonstrate that there is sensitivity to condition, conditions, yes, then you have exactly some sort of chaos going on. Exactly, but in two dimensions, there's actually theory. There's there's whole you know, everything's kind of that you you cannot have that kind of behavior. It has to you have to have another dimension so you can bypass this kind of limit cycles if they exist or you have to bypass, okay? Um, anyway, it gets it gets it kind of into a very advanced uh, area of, of of you know dynamical systems 
Um, even today, this is, this is far from being well understood. For the simple reason that, like if somebody's asking you, you know, here's a, here's a system, okay, and, and it's not that simple, but it's still polynomial. So I give you a third degree polynomial here. Like remember that, uh, well, this is third, third degree polynomial. But maybe here, this is a fifth degree polynomial, right? And find all the limit cycles. Find, find all the find what what can happen with the system, right? And very very quick, you, you get to things that are not known. I mean, you can try, you know. I mean, you can plot things, right? But remember, you have a limitation because what if, what if, what if something like really big is happening outside, right? How will you know that? You don't know. So there are things that you can do with a computer, but things that you cannot do with a computer. So anyway, so. The one interesting thing is though is that for discrete dynamical system, even in one dimension, you have this limiting behavior which is the sensitive to initial conditions. Okay. All right. Um, last thing that I wanted to mention, so that you can you can uh, do your homework, and I have one minute left, is uh, number number uh, problem number four, which I assigned. No, I'm sorry. Which one is it? No, problem number five, chapter uh, six, refers is revisits basically number ten of chapter four, and that's the infectious disease problem. So for the infectious disease problem, I just want you to, to I just want to write down the system here. We talked a little bit. We said that uh, in a population of a hundred thousand people. There are three types. There is susceptible, S of T. There is uh, infected, I of T. And there is immune, that's C of T. Okay? And I wrote the system before, but I didn't give you, I mean, just kind of to simplify this. So one, one, uh, <coughs> thing that is clear is that the sum of the three at all times is 100,000. And uh, the change in susceptible is proportional to the product between the two S and I. The change in I is, again, proportional to S and I with the same constant, minus one-third I. So one-third comes from the whatever number of weeks. So I'm just writing this so you can just write this down. Um, a is, the number A is 40 over 18 times 70 thousandths. And again, this is because the initial susceptible population is 70 thousand. The initial infected population is the eight, 18. So, what you need to do is, in this problem is, I think, just to simulate this dynamical system, okay? And again, ask, answer the questions that are in that original problem. But, but uh, and uh, keep in mind, because, because this thing, this thing always adds up to 100,000, really this, the third, is, this is the second, this is a two-dimensional, two right, system. The third one is always determined by the other two, so, so you can actually, I think you can just take the first two, right? All right. I think time's up, so. All right, but, but anyway, this, these are the values that you can just use. So it's just a question of modifying that uh, Wales, pro, Wales code or RLC code. If you need to leave your exam, <clears throat> you don't have to. Oh, okay. What do we need to leave for? We don't. Yeah, if you want to.
If you think that you did more than I asked in class, oh, yeah.